Yesterday, I met with my good friend, Garth Wright, over lunch, and he told me about his sermon that he gave on Sunday in our local church. Uh, now, I've heard quite a few of them by now, and they always have one thing in common. They are laser sharp, cut to the core, even radical, and there is surely no sugar coating in any of his messages. And I really admire that. And when people leave church and go home, they have quite a few things to think about, including me. And some people change their lives as a result of one radical sermon. Now, my message today won't be as radical, but I'm not going to sugarcoat things either. And uh, all of us really have a choice. We can, well, listen to it and forget it the moment it's over, or we can just take some nuggets out of it and hold on to them and, and maybe even change some things that we are doing every day for NHT Global. All right. Um, all the Irish are settled down, I would think, so we can start. It's uh, not going to go too long anyway, so please stop just reading all your all your emails right now and just listen in. Now, in the in the light of uh, the upcoming roadshow with with Joe Garcia in Europe, I just want to talk really about one topic. Why are events so important and how do I really promote them in the best possible way? Now, let's start with a fact. Um, building for events, that means promoting them, belongs really to the number one priority of any network marketer. Or if we look at it from a different angle, um, it's clear a clear truth in, in network marketing, the person who attends most events with guests wins, wins the big prize. Uh, now, why is that? Um, events just simply drive the business forward. And that really means your business. And when you drive more people to, to events, your group will go faster, stronger, create momentum and maintain momentum, which is really the key to long-term success. And when that happens, you make more money. Um, events are also kind of, ma well, almost magically, they, they create a sense of reality that simply no other medium is able to deliver. And sometimes, of course, the event just helps you personally. Sometimes you just need to get away from the day-to-day -day work and, and remind yourself of your own goals. Uh, there at those events you have the chance to to refocus on 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 your dreams and and recommit to them actually now when i started some 13 years ago with this very company nhc global which is also as most of you know my first company in the industry ever i didn't know any of that but fortunately very very fortunately i had a really good sponsor called Garth Wright, who, who simply helped me tremendously. And one day when I was really feeling down and, and depressed because my group was just not growing as I wanted to, he told me the following. He said, Thomas, there's going to be a big corporate event in Dallas, Texas, and you have got to go. Now, you should have seen my face in that moment. It was just, well, pure shock of just the thought that I should fly to America from Europe to some sort of gathering with, with lots of people, which I didn't even know. Uh, and I couldn't even believe he, he had suggested that. So very confidently, I looked at him and said, no way, I am just not going. In on top, even if I would consider it, it would cost me at least a thousand dollars, you know, the ticket, the hotel, the food. So I'm just not going, period. And I thought that was a strong statement I gave, a clear message to my sponsor. And I could really not imagine at that moment how, how this would benefit my business in any way, shape or form. 
But in contrast to me, fortunately, my sponsor was a wise man and he gave it a thought and, and said to me simply, Thomas, it will cost you probably more than a thousand dollars. But if you don't go, it will cost you eventually hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of lost money, lost commissions that you will not get because you have not yet understood what this business is all about and you will fail. You have to go and find out. And you know, sometimes I'm sure you have that feeling, but suddenly I had this very strange feeling where I, I kind of knew he was right, but I still refused to confront the thought of it. But sometimes even I make wise decisions. So I reluctantly agreed that I would go and I, and I did. And of course it was, it was just so true, you know, being there, seeing the magic happening, um, changed my whole perception on the business, my, my, my view on that opportunity, the, the, the incredible trainings I, I received, they all brought me to my knees. Really. I, I connected with people that, that later on helped me further develop my groups. And, and I met among other people, Joe Garcia in, and I remember to this very day, his talk, he gave about, um, well, it was a great talk and, and that would later become the foundation really of my personal development story, uh, journey actually. And you know, today, today I, I really know that I, I truly, truly would have missed out uh, and not on hundreds of thousands of dollars, but on millions of dollars over the period of my time with NHT. Now that's a lot of money to miss out. So don't make that mistake. So the question, the question you really have to ask yourself right now is, and maybe you should actually write this down. How can I personally contribute best for it to become a huge success? Now that's, that's the question you have to ask yourself. How can I personally contribute best for it to become a huge success? Now I'm talking about the event. And if you, if you look at this question every single morning until the event is here, you will just burn that into your mind, into your brain. And every day you will think about what can I do today to contribute to this event? And, you know, I've, I've really seen it over and over again. Those of us who understand that concept make it in this business. And those who don't, well, they don't. It's that simple. There's just no success in network marketing without using the leverage of events. So let's just quickly analyze events for a second. How do they work? Now take any event and, and there are typically three phases. The first phase is the phase before the event. The second phase is the event itself. And the third, the third phase is the phase, well, after the event. Now, if you had to prioritize, what would you think is the most important, the second most important, and the least important of those three phases? Well, give it a thought. But I'll tell you anyway, it's, of course, the phase before the event, the phase after the event, and then the event itself. So the event itself is actually the least important. You don't have to worry about anything. Uh, it, it will take place with or without you, with or, or without your guests. But the phase before the event determines how the event will turn out for you and how much money you will make in the future. Now, when events come up, like we're going to see, uh, well, like it's happening right now, it's, it's time to become really active. And I mean, massively active, uh, almost like in, like in day and night effort uh, is, is, is actually necessary for just not missing out on all this. You know, leaders usually travel thousands of kilometers to, to excite you and your prospects. 
And currently, you've got Joe and, and others travel from all over the world uh, to present to you what our company has to offer. Now, wouldn't it be a shame if there weren't any people coming to see this? Well, think about it. Well, better actually not. Um, but as I think about it myself, there's one more thing that I should actually mention. If you want this to work for you, you have to be proud of this industry. And with that, I mean, you, you need to be proud that you are associated with network marketing. Because if you're not, you will not be able to create that excitement that is necessary to present what we're offering to all those prospects. Now, that actually reminds me of one intense experience that I had in my first year. I actually wanted to forget that this ever happened, but I guess I can share it now as, as part of this training um, webinar for you. So, um, well, when I started, I, I, I really went up like a rocket, you know, based purely on excitement and and um, probably also our energy drink we had at the time, La Vie. <laughs> Actually, a shame that it's that this product is gone in Europe. Anyway, uh, I was booming in those first few months, and and I think the reason was most likely my ignorance and and lack of knowledge. What I um, what I got well when I got involved in. Uh, remember, I said that before, you know, NHT was my first and only company in the industry ever. And then I started to listen to all those, all those people around me who, who themselves had no idea about this industry, but they, they thought they can at least lecture me and, and tell me their super negative view and, and, and why I should be doing, why I shouldn't be doing this. And that's when I crashed because I realized what I got involved in based on, on all those negative people around me. Our whole industry is being, is being criticized by people who don't have a clue and never had any success on their own, but they dare voice their opinion about something they don't understand at all. Boy, that, that kind of gets me going now. Um, well, let's take an example. Well, let's take... Um, yeah, let's look at, for example, a used car dealership. Have you ever bought a used car before? Um, well, haven't you heard that used cars are actually all crashed and then glued back together and sold as fantastic value cars? Or that they are um, speedometer or, or tachometer or whatever you call that has been modified and turned back by some 50,000 kilometers so that so that they look in better shape. Well, yes, there are some black sheep out there, but that doesn't mean that all used car dealers are crooks and criminals. Now, one of the reasons why, why all those black sheep misuse our industry is because there is so much easy money to be made, but that doesn't mean the industry as a whole is bad. And we distributors need to understand that and be ready to fight for it. And let's look at corporate America for a second. I mean, the CEO of a big company is the best, pace per, is the best paid person in the company, regardless of his performance, just because he's CEO. And if he gets fired, he probably had, has a million dollar kickout bonus negotiated when he signed his contract. And now he walks out a rich man. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is the true pyramid system where the top leaders get the most and, and those who probably work the most but are, are on the opposite end of that system get the least. Now that does not seem to be a fair system. Okay, well, I just got carried away, but I, I started by telling you about my intense experience that I wanted to forget. Um, so back to that story. Um, one day in my, my first year, I wanted to present the business to, to a good friend of mine from, from, um, from work, from my former work, and we met for coffee. And... Um, 
in the third in the first 30 minutes or so i tried to tell him i tried to tell him everything about this opportunity but i didn't want to tell him that this is actually network marketing so i was going around in circles telling him this and that anything and nothing at all and then at one point he just suddenly said Thomas, what are you trying to tell me? I don't understand anything that you are talking about. And that's when I realized that something had to change. I either had to quit on the spot or just embrace that whole network marketing ideology and become proud of it. There was just no other way. And that's what I did. All right, so back to events. Um, back to events. Remember, uh, they are so important because they also add fuel to your own vision and commitment. I mean, live events build those relationships as you meet people face to face. You know, the, the personal handshake, uh, looking into the eyes of your prospect cannot be replaced by anything. Events belong to this industry, like water to fish. So uh, your, your main job really in this, in this business uh, is to become an excellent promoter of events. But if, if promoting events doesn't work for you yet, uh, there are usually two common reasons. Now, firstly, you still don't understand why events are so important and therefore you don't promote properly or you're just plain lazy. Or secondly, your approach is just not attractive for your prospects. Now, if either of those two points um, or two issues apply to you, the upcoming event with Joe won't change anything in your business and that can be and will be really frustrating and worst of all this will duplicate as anything else does in this business if you don't promote well your people won't do it either so um when it when when it comes to that you know phase before the event which we are in right now everyone has to be out in the field there are just no observers, no, no watchers. We are just all players. You're just, you, you are really one team playing together. And if you don't want to contribute to the overall success, maybe it's best to leave the stadium altogether because you really need to understand you invite, not the company. It's you who invites, it's not the leaders. You built the business not they built the business. You are responsible for your success, not them. And um, I've, I've kind of heard, you know, some people say that events don't work anymore, but they do. It's just your promotion for the event that doesn't work, but events do. And most likely their importance will even increase over time because no video, no audio, no internet or webinar will ever change that. So the question that begs here is, how do you actually promote effectively? Um, well, first you, you just simply need to understand those three phases that we talked about. The phase before the event, as I said, is just the most important one. You need to have a, a um, well-prepared, attractive and powerful promotion strategy in place, full of excitement. Excitement actually is the key. So you can't be boring, but you've got to, to, to share the right things. So what should you share? Well, let's look at some options. We've got some great products. Some of them save people's lives. Others make people feel good and look good. So should we promote those? Well, yeah, sure. 
but just on the site, not as the main attraction. If you focus just on products only, you will just attract a lot of sick people and a few medical experts. Now, if in contrast to that, you just promote a, let's say, riskless part-time income, you will probably have all the unemployed sitting next to you. And if you promote in a very boring, unspecific way, like this, for example, uh, Mr. Prospect, maybe if you could spare your time on Tuesday night, you might want to take a look at our company, blah, 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 blah. Well, let me tell you, your guests will most likely not show up. So what then should you focus on? What should you, what should be, you know, the main theme? Now I, I claim you want to promote the money and guess what? It works. 98% of people who start in this business do it for the money and not because of the products. Now we have fortunately amazing products but it's the money that will be the biggest attraction to your prospects, even if they don't admit it. So when promoting this, this upcoming event, you have got to play the drums, you know, loudly. Something big is about to happen. Uh, okay, um, well, here's a list of some of the most important steps that you should take. Uh, well, first, obviously, start contacting people early. Uh, probably, I don't know, 10 days before the event is the latest, you should talk to your contacts. Um, create also, you know, a, a written name list of the people you want to invite so that you actually don't miss anyone. I mean, treat this professionally because it is a professional business. Uh, and that's a big one now. Invite only in person or by phone. You know, emailing, putting out Facebook posts or, or posting flyers on street lamps will not work, period. It won't. The only thing that works if you have got a great story and you talk to your prospects in person or by phone with excitement. That's when they will respond. They will not respond to anything else. Uh, so have your story prepared and, and think of keywords or, or key phrases that would make you excited to go to such an event. Script your message out. I mean, write it down and speak with full excitement. Practice that actually before you go to your prospect to, to invite him. Practice. And of course, support your downline to do the same. Obviously, that's a no-brainer. And then most importantly, actually, call all your prospects again, one to two days before the event and just reconfirm that they're coming. Now, when you do all these steps, there is just no reason why each of you should not be able to bring at least 10 guests to any event. Um, so th that, that, that the neck, I mean, that then the event comes up, uh, which you don't have to worry about too much. And then we've got the phase after the event, the, the, the follow-up phase. Now, you really want to make sure that you meet with your guests not later than 48 hours or so after the event. In the worst case, you have to call them on the phone and follow up and make sure they have all the, the information they need in order to make a qualified decision. And then ask them for their decision to join our company. And I mean, ask, you know, so many people don't actually ask out of fear that the prospect could say, no, thank you. But you gotta have to ask them, follow up and see if they have any questions. And questions or, or even criticism are always a good sign. It just means that you didn't address all of their concerns yet, but they need more time and, and some more replies to their questions. 
So follow up no later than 48 hours and be sure to ask them about their decision. Um, so compare these steps with whatever you and your team have done in the past. Now I'm convinced that if you follow all these steps, you will have a room packed with people who are excited to be there and listen to the NHT story because your success depends on this. And if you want the good life, this is what you have to do. Um, because there's also, an there's also an alternative. And that one looks like this, an empty room. I've seen a lot of them. They are a part of the business. But if everyone in your market does just half of what I just talked about, you will have a packed room. Now, I guess we all know this in the back of our heads. But the key, the key in this business is simply more action, not more knowing. But you knew that too, right? So last words and, and just listen up, please. In about, what, seven to 10 days, you will have Joe Garcia coming to Europe, Antonella from Corporate NHT Global and a corporate product formulator. I mean, all part of that European roadshow. You will have the whole enchilada in your backyard. I mean, they are flying from Canada, the US, Italy to your city to show you into your prospects what this is business is about i mean that's your chance to put your prospects into one big room and let them do the work for you at least once now most of you know joe already now he may not be big in body size but he's big in his heart in intellect i mean he has a huge passion for the business a huge passion to help other people become a better version of themselves. And in, my, in, in, in all my business life, I've really not yet met anyone who would be more interested in helping people like Joe Garcia. You know, he flies to help you, well, he flies in to help you and your prospects. So come on guys, get the drums out. Use the strategy I just talked about and give yourself a last push. When you talk with excitement about this business, people will be excited. Sometimes you, you just need to really fine tune small things in your actions or approach and they can change your whole life. So don't let this opportunity pass you. All right, guys, I, I wish you all success and have a great event. Thanks for listening and certainly see you so, soon again. Good night, everyone, and goodbye from Prague.